Guys, Coach Kurt, so we're going to talk about the evolution of wrestling, grappling, judo, jiu-jitsu, and where I think it's going or where I hear people say they think it's going. And, of course, we have to start at the beginning. Uh, in ancient Greece, There we have statues and pictures and, and stuff of people wrestling, so we know wrestling is extremely old. And if you're talking from a jiu-jitsu point of view, it started on the battlefields with the samurai, they still primary, primarily use their weapons, but they would get the person to the ground and they would end up using a short range weapon if they hadn't actually finished the fight on the feet. And other places like China and India, I mean, Russia has their own system of Sambo. Every square inch of the globe, I don't care what country you come from, I guarantee that your country has some kind of tradition when it comes to wrestling and grappling. And I think that's a wonderful thing. I think that uh, there's lots of crossover. There's only so many ways to skin a cat, right? There's only so many ways to load somebody up on a hip to throw them or to attack their legs or attack their arms for takedowns and throws. Uh, here you see the mud wrestling of India. These guys are phenomenal athletes. I would not want to roll with any of these guys. They would destroy me. Um, but you get the point. It, from the beginning of time, man, we are grapplers. And in the modern era, you're seeing a lot of crossover. And I think that this is, I mean, I could be completely off. Feel free to tell me that I'm wrong and disagree with me, but I think this is the idea of combining things and returning them. For example, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Judo is more of an American idea and concept, and I'm sure there's other countries where Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as 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 just as big as it is here in the States, but it seems like every Jiu-Jitsu gym is developing a judo for BJJ class or a wrestling for BJJ class. And this is good um, because, you know, I'm one of those people that I think you're a dirty car guard puller if you pull guard and you f butt flop and butt scoot. I don't think that's good for, for self-defense. But see, I just touched on it right there. I train primarily for self-defense. So I have a, a, a basic striking game. I have a basic uh, distance management game, takedown game. And because I do Taiho Jitsu and my approach is for law enforcement, my takedowns tend to be what I call ethical takedowns. I'm not trying to slam somebody's head into the concrete and explode their head all over the concrete. That would be bad. It would not be objectively reasonable for a police officer to do that. So I tend to do more of what I call soft takedowns that I can juice up if I have to. Um, but th that's the point is, is I grapple and find the grappling influences that work for me and what I use it for. And we have to look at rule sets. Modern Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, you know, evolved from Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, which came from Judo, which came from Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. You're seeing catch wrestling up on the screen. I worked out at a Jiu-Jitsu gym that the coach was a catch wrestler before he even got into Jiu-Jitsu back in the day. So he there was influence at that gym from that point of view. But rule set has a lot to do with everything. And there are other things that you will see slightly different in various systems, and we'll get into that. But rule sets like the IBJJF, for example, for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you see the reason they grapple the way they grapple today in today's world of Jiu-Jitsu is basically the rule sets. Uh, you The takedown, traditionally speaking, or I wouldn't even say the word traditional, but you have seen the influence or lack of influence of the takedown in a lot of sport jiu-jitsu gyms. They use some basic wrestling takedowns. Uh, they, they don't care how they get you to the ground. They just want to get you to the ground so they can grapple and uh, you know pass your guard, get points, mount, get points, take your back, get points, and of course submit and get points. And rules uh, depend on when you can attack the lower body, legs, so forth. Certain belt levels are required in a lot of jiu-jitsu schools or organizations like the IBJJF. Uh, white belts can't do leg locks and so forth. You get the idea. Where you go over to catch wrestling and from day one they're doing lower body attacks. In sambo they do lower body attacks. In judo and sambo and, uh, you know, Mongolian wrestling all in... Uh, 
Chinese wrestling, all these are really throw heavy. And again, it goes back to the rule set. In fact, I don't think they do much of any groundwork in uh, Chinese wrestling. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if you practice Chinese wrestling. Um, it is not a ground-based system. It's mostly the throw and the takedown. In judo, it's the big ipon that wins the match. And of course, there's groundwork in jujitsu or in judo, but the whole concept is to uh, keep the action moving, keep it uh, friendly for the audience and for the Olympics, for example. And people want to see fast action, fast motion. The throw is the emphasis. The takedown is the emphasis. And if you end up on the ground, you got to finish it quick. If it stalls out, they will stand you on your feet and you will continue from there. So what happens when you start combining these systems? Well, you know, I've, I did a video is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu just another form of judo and I think I came to the conclusion and people in the comments also agreed that yeah it's pretty much just a variation of judo and that it maybe it should be cons construed as Brazilian judo and not Brazilian Jiu Jitsu but that's neither here nor there it doesn't really matter what you call your particular system of training as far as Jiu Jitsu, Judo, Sambo, catch wrestling, uh, regular you know collegiate wrestling, uh, folk style wrestling what have you um, how you grapple is often based on the rule set. Now, here in America, you see a lot of like, uh, there's been a lot of push, rightly so, and I love that this is happening in the sport context especially. You're seeing a push for wanting to see more takedowns. You're seeing a lot more no-gi matches where uh, wrestling is, high, is a huge influence in the game and judo is uh, more of your influence in the gi side of the game. And you see practitioners training uh, those other systems uh, to incorporate into their jiu-jitsu so they can get better at their takedowns and throws. Because there's a lot of sports jiu-jitsu schools, they, they, they don't practice their takedown as much um, because the rule set focuses more on the ground. And then you get into MMA and you add strikes and it's a whole different animal. And MMA wrestling and grappling looks slightly different based on the protecting of yourself from strikes than you would see in judo or catch or what have you. Now, Sambo, for example, is a system that has combat Sambo where there's plenty of striking and it's basically MMA and a gi. And uh, uh, there's other systems out there that are similar. But I think what I'm trying to get at is is it all depends on the rule set, and I don't think it, it's a good thing to try to evolve all grappling, wrestling into one system. I don't think that's productive. I don't think it's fun for everybody because everybody enters grappling and wrestling for their own reasons, and they gravitate to the system that they enjoy uh, as they should and I shouldn't be forcing my will like I want to train f mostly for self-defense and control tactics and combatives that's fine and dandy that's great for me it doesn't mean that uh, everybody wants that and I think a lot of people want to be efficient enough that they know they can then defend themselves in a street fight but there are people that go to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or they're high school wrestlers or they're college wrestlers and uh, they know they're never going to make the Olympics, but they just love wrestling. They love the, the, the rules and the way things are done in their system of grappling. And that's completely fine. And it should, uh, the whole concept of trying to combine systems shouldn't be forced down anybody's throat. If you want to train those other systems, you're going to have to cross train or you're going to have to find a gym that emphasizes those other systems and tries, for example, Braz uh, judo for jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu specifically. You're seeing a lot of that wrestling for no-gi jiu-jitsu. You're seeing a lot of that. You're even seeing a no-gi judo game, which looks a lot like Greco to a certain degree, but with the groundwork. And... Um, Samba, for example, attacks the legs, where judo doesn't attack the legs anymore. And there's another good example of what I'm talking about. The modern Olympic rule set doesn't allow for leg attacks. So the whole judo has changed. It, it looks different from it did in the 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s. So I guess at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, is practice the system of grappling that you enjoy, um, and don't try to force 
your rule set down other people's throats. Everybody has their reason for why they train, and I think that's important. I think it's important that we keep the separate systems alive and, and going. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and share, and everybody take care and stay safe. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out. Thank you.